Today we're taking a look at the Tongate case for the Samsung S23 Ultra. Tongate had reached out to me asking to sponsor this video, and since the case looked like it was built well and offered a good amount of value, I was more than happy to work with them. The case that they had sent over is the tried and true interlocking frame style case. This means that it is two pieces, a front and a backside piece. The front frame interlocks with the main case body and it forms a very tight connection. This is good because these cases are very strong in terms of drop resistance. This is a great design because these cases tend to absorb a lot of fall damage as opposed to your phone. Interlocking cases such as this are my top choice for protecting my smartphone. I know that people do like those ultra thin cases and some of us even roll out a case, but I definitely think this one is worth taking a look at. Tongate opted to include the two different frame options for this case, as I mentioned. You're getting an open frame, which does not include a built-in screen protector, but you also have the option to install the frame with a built-in screen protector. I like that they included both options in the case. There's only one version to buy, and you can try both out. Some people are not going to like the built-in screen protector, or they just wish to supply their own screen protector. In that case, I do recommend tempered glass, but I would understand if you like the thinner plastic style. In terms of my preference, I like the built-in screen protector frame option, and I think that for the price of the case, this makes it a really good value. I'll be going through the installation of both options, as well as everything included with the case. As you can see from the unboxing, Tongate is including a larger belt clip style phone mounting piece, which is kind of cool. If you're moving around a lot or constantly reaching for your phone, this might be a very useful accessory and it's included with the case. So in terms of the case installation, it's relatively simple. I always recommend that you do a preliminary screen cleaning with a microfiber cloth and then you would start with the case. You would grab whichever frame option that you prefer. I'll be testing the open frame first. You can see that I fitted the frame to the phone body. Instructions are included with the case, but you can see the general gist of how you would install this. You'll fit whichever frame option you like to the phone body first, and then you'll insert the phone body and the installed frame into the main rear case body. The trick to installing these type of cases on a phone is to always install the top side of the phone into the main case body first, and then I always flip them upside down and then press in the rest of the phone. I think this way is the easiest way to get the phone inside of the case. This case is relatively tight in terms of the interlocking pieces with the frame and the main case body though, so you're definitely going to want to go around the perimeter and make sure that the case is firmly installed. The material on the main case body is a smoother but not slippery type of rubber material. It lends itself to having a little bit of extra grip on your hands and your fingers when you're holding the phone, and the case still feels nice in your hands. In terms of the case protection, the sides, top, and bottom of the case are pretty good thickness. The top and the bottom of the case have raised bezels, which is also a key protection item to have. The case in general looks like it's formed well. The corners should absorb a decent amount of force from drops. Tongate says that they are reinforced on the inside, so these really should absorb decent drops. Looking at the fully assembled case on the S23 Ultra, you can see that the case's Z height extends a few millimeters past the screen. This means that when the phone falls on a flat surface, the screen is not going to touch. This is ideal because you want the case to absorb that uneven impact when the phone gets dropped, not your expensive screen. That's ultimately what leads to the spiderweb cracking on your screen. Switching over to the built-in screen protector frame option, I think the thickness of the screen protector is good. It seems like it's going to hold up against your everyday type of scratches, like keys or just miscellaneous items in your pocket or your purse. In testing the fingerprint sensor, I didn't have any issues. It picked up my fingerprint right away. Tongi actually uses a different material in this section of the case, and that allows your thumbprint or fingerprint to be read more easily. I really like that the screen side of the phone is lifted. The back side of the phone is also raised a little bit too. When it comes to the backside design, I think the backside of the case looks good. In general, I like this style. It also seems like the cameras are really well protected. There's a cutout piece in the case which puts at least two millimeters, it looks like, in between the camera lenses and the outer surface. 
As you can see, you have a dual rail sliding camera door, which is an option that I really haven't seen before. This is kind of a neat feature. You can actually slide this door back and forth and then lock it in place. So when you don't need to take pictures or video, you can lock the door over the camera lenses. And then when you want to use the camera, you just move the door to the other side. This is definitely one way to put a barrier in between your camera lenses and the outside world. In terms of other features that this case has, I definitely like that it has a kickstand. I'm a huge fan of kickstands. I'm always putting on videos and wearing my earbuds in my office and in my house. I like that this will prop the phone up so when I'm walking past my desk or the counter, I can see or get a glimpse of the video that I'm watching, as opposed to laying the phone flat on a surface and pretty much never seeing the video. In terms of the cutouts for the microphone, the speaker, the USB port, and the S Pen, they were all clean and they all worked well. I didn't have any audio issues, I didn't have any issues with plugging in the USB charge cable, and ejecting the S Pen and reinserting the S Pen was easy. I was able to get the S23 Ultra with the case installed on my Qi charger also. It charged in both the upright and laying on its side positions, so I would say this is definitely compatible with Qi charging. Overall, I really like the Tongate case for the S23 Ultra. This is a pretty solid option. I liked the included frame options and the locking system for assembling the case was very good. I also enjoyed the camera protection solution, lifting the cameras up a little bit and adding the camera door. That's not something I see very often. In general, when handling the case, it really didn't seem too bulky, even though this is a more protective style of case. So that's good to see and feel. So I would say if you're looking for a solid S23 Ultra case option, multiple screen frame options, and a unique twist on camera protection, I would definitely recommend taking a look at the Tongate S23 Ultra case. If you like this case review, it would mean a lot to me if you could smash that like button and let me know down in the comment section. This channel is dedicated to smartphone and mobile tech videos, so if this kind of stuff interests you, make sure to get subscribed.